This tour of Earth's ocean islands takes us from Hawaii to Iceland to Easter Island, to name a few. This is a view of the uninhabited Monariki Island and its fringing reef, located in the Mamanuka Islands of Fiji in the South Pacific. Following the mutiny on the HMS Bounty in 1789, Captain William Bly and 18 others became the first Westerners to see this group of 20 islands. This is also a filming location for the movie Castaway. Most ocean islands are volcanic in origin and are typically located in the deep ocean basins. They commonly occur at interplate hotspots, subduction zones, and even mid-ocean ridges. The Hawaiian Islands are typical of the many interplate hotspot ocean islands. The Aleutian Islands and Japanese Islands represent island arcs built above subduction zones. And Iceland is located both on a hotspot and a mid-ocean ridge. Several volcano types are common to ocean islands. Island arcs are built mostly on towering stratovolcanoes, with lava domes and calderas also noteworthy. Stratovolcanoes form the islands of the four mountains in the Aleutian Islands. Mount Ayodaki is a lava dome on Ayojima Island in Japan. And Krakatoa, located between Sumatra and Java, is a famous caldera that erupted in 1883. Hotspots typically generate mafic volcanic structures, like shield volcanoes and cinder cones. Piton de la Fourne is a shield volcano on Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. Mauna Kea itself a large shield volcano, hosts numerous smaller cinder cones on its flanks. We can always reference the volcano review table for details about the characteristics of the main volcano types, all of which can be found in Earth's ocean basins. Tropical islands and atolls typically support biologically diverse shallow marine ecosystems. For example, coral reefs occupy less than one-tenth of one percent of Earth's ocean areas, yet they include at least 25 percent of all marine species. If they are large enough, ocean islands may also support abundant terrestrial life. High islands are volcanic in origin, with soil and fresh groundwater. In the Cook Islands of the central South Pacific, Rarotonga is the largest island and represents a high island. Low islands are smaller and built upon coral reefs. While they may support limited plant and animal life, they lack fresh groundwater and are typically uninhabited, at least by humans. Also in the Cook Islands, Takutea is an example of a low island. It's only 6 meters above sea level at its highest point. Keys are low, sandy islands built upon coral reefs. The Florida Keys are a famous example, a coral reef archipelago extending off the main Florida peninsula. By the way, much of the series Lost was filmed on Oahu, most definitely a high island in the Hawaiian island chain. Let's talk a little bit more about coral reefs. They are biologically diverse, shallow marine ecosystems built largely of coral, a marine animal. Most coral reefs grow best in water that is warm, shallow, and clear. Ideal water temperature is 26 to 27 degrees C, which is roughly 79 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Few coral reefs exist in colder waters below 18 degrees C, which is roughly 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Coral reef development is largely controlled by sea level, with most coral reef growth occurring within 60 to 90 feet from sea level. Finally, most live coral reefs are relatively young, less than 10,000 years or so. There are a few different types of coral reefs. Some form adjacent to an island or the mainland, a fringing reef is attached to the shoreline. 
fringing reefs are present in many of the small islands in the Yap Island group of the Caroline Islands. Barrier reefs are separated from the shoreline by a lagoon. The Great Barrier Reef is, of course, the most famous of this type of reef. Patch reefs are small, isolated reefs, typically with a lagoon. There are 79 patch reefs in Kanahoe Bay, Oahu, that range up to 850 meters in diameter, with an average depth of about 1 meter. Some reefs create their own islands, and include platform reefs and atolls. A platform reef, or bank, is a large reef that grows in all directions, and does not have a central lagoon. These are common on continental shelves. The Grand Bahama Bank and the Great Barrier Reef contain numerous examples of platform reefs. Heron Island and Heron Reef are located in the Great Barrier Reef along Australia's eastern continental shelf. An atoll is a circular reef around a shallow to deep lagoon. There is no central island in an atoll. Rangaroa Island in the Palizer Islands of French Polynesia is an excellent example of an atoll. Let's now look at some notable ocean islands, starting in the Pacific Ocean. The Aleutian Islands form the island arc portion of the Aleutian Volcanic Arc about 1,900 kilometers in length, and is composed of five groups of more than 70 islands. The Aleutian Island Arc is formed as a result of the Pacific Oceanic Plate subducting beneath the oceanic portion of the North American Plate. There are 57 volcanoes in the Aleutian Islands, 40 of which are active stratovolcanoes and calderas. These include the highly active stratovolcano Mount Cleveland, which is one of the islands of the Four Mountains, and Mount Akatan, located farther northeast up the island chain. The Aleutian Islands form an island arc that extends almost 2,000 kilometers from the Alaska Peninsula in the east to the Kamchatka Peninsula in the west, and separates the Pacific Ocean from the Bering Sea. The Aleutian Arc can be divided into island groups comprised of dozens of islands home to 40 active volcanoes and currently forms the northern part of the Pacific's Ring of Fire. The Island Arc began forming in the early Eocene epoch 50 to 55 million years ago with the subduction of the Pacific Oceanic Plate beneath the oceanic portion of the North American Plate. Older volcanic and sedimentary rocks of Eocene to Miocene age form the basement under the younger Pliocene to recent volcanic and sedimentary rocks. The Commander Islands form the westernmost of the Aleutians, consisting of two larger treeless islands and many smaller islets and rocks. populated to a far greater degree by northern fur seals, stellar sea lions, and sea otters than by people. There's roughly 600 Russians and Aleuts. These islands are composed mostly of Eocene basaltic to andesitic lava, tuff, and conglomerate. Moving east, we cross the international dateline and consequently move back one day on the calendar. We then encounter the near islands with Atu, Agatu, and about a dozen smaller islands. Atu became uninhabited in 2010, making it the largest uninhabited island in the United States. Also, in 1942, Atu was briefly occupied by the Japanese and was the site of the only World War II land battle fought on United States soil. The Rat Islands are more volcanic in origin than their cousins to the west, composed of eroded shield volcanoes, stratovolcanoes, and calderas, 
that have either been active during the Holocene or are historically active. Kiska Island includes an active stratovolcano at its northern end, with the last eruptive activity occurring in 1990. And as at Atu, Kiska was also briefly occupied by the Japanese during World War II. Next comes Segula Island, the exposed portion of a historically inactive stratovolcano. This island supports a large population of auklets, northern Pacific seabirds that are good swimmers and divers. Formed during the collapse of a late tertiary stratovolcano, a partially submerged, three kilometer wide caldera forms a cluster of small islands, with Davidoff being the largest. Did I mention that puffins like to hang out here? Nearby Little Sitkin is an active Dacitic stratovolcano built inside two older Pleistocene calderas. And finally, there is Semi Sapochnoi, the largest active volcanic island in the western Aleutians. It consists of an older collapsed basaltic shield volcano and caldera with several younger basaltic to andesitic stratovolcanoes, including the active three coned Mount Cerberus. And then come the Andreanoff Islands, which include a number of active volcanoes, from Great Sitkin in the east to Garaloy in the west. Garaloy is a double-peaked basaltic stratovolcano that represents the emergent summit of a mostly submarine volcano. Recent eruptions produced a large summit crater and 12 smaller craters along a southeast trending fissure, as well as several basaltic block lava flows. Steep sloped Tanaga is part of a complex of several young basaltic to andesitic stratovolcanoes. Many Aleutian stratovolcanoes, like Tanaga, rise over a mile in height above the ocean. Like many Aleutian volcanoes, Kanaga Island's conical stratovolcano occupies an older caldera. Recent eruptions have included several more viscous basaltic andesite block lava flows that display prominent lava levees. We pass Adak, Kagalaska, and other islands before coming to Great Sitkin Island. The Great Sitkin Stratovolcano Complex forms the northern half of the island and is composed of an older stratovolcano and caldera with a younger active basaltic to andesitic stratovolcano with a small summit caldera and lava dome. And here's Kasatochi Island, the emergent summit of a predominantly submarine stratovolcano. Atka, the largest of the Andreanoff Islands, includes a volcanic center that represents the typical progression from basaltic shield volcano to stratovolcano to caldera, with younger stratovolcanoes coming last. The last of the Andreanoff Islands is Seguam with its two remnant calderas and three stratovolcanoes. To the east is the volcanic cluster called the Islands of the Four Mountains, which actually has eight major islands, several of which are active. Unasca consists of two main volcanic centers. In the west are four eroded overlapping stratocones with flanking cinder cones. In the east is an older shield volcano with two younger nested calderas with lava flows and small cones. Next comes the trifecta of iconic island arc volcanoes, Herbert, Carlisle, and Cleveland. All are beautifully conical stratovolcanoes.
Although these remote and uninhabited volcanoes are geologically young, they have no record of historic eruptions, except for the highly active Cleveland volcano. And together with Tana, Chugunadak's eastern stratovolcano complex, these are the islands of the four mountains. The Fox Islands are the easternmost of the Aleutian Islands and consist of the relatively large islands of Umnak, Unalaska, Akutan, and Unimak, with lots of smaller islands as well. Here's Yumnak Island and the highly symmetrical stratovolcano Sevadov. It's composed of both older basaltic to anisitic lavas and younger, more felsic lavas. And both it and the neighboring Wicheshnoi are glaciated. Farther northeast is the Akmak volcano, a roughly 35 kilometer wide basaltic shield volcano punctuated by two overlapping 10 kilometer wide calderas. Recent eruptions have produced numerous cinder cones and lava flows on the caldera floor and flanks. We move over to Unalaska Island. Less than 10,000 people inhabit the commonly windy, often foggy, mostly treeless Aleutian Islands, but most reside in the Dutch Harbor, Unalaska area of the Fox Islands. Dutch Harbor was bombed by the Japanese in 1942 and also served as a home to refugees evacuated from other Aleutian Islands. Today, it is a major fishing port, as seen in the TV series Deadliest Catch. 40 kilometers to the northeast is Akutan Island and the active Akutan Volcano. Akutan is a stratovolcano with a 2 kilometer wide summit caldera and an active intracaldera cinder cone. Akutan is one of the most active volcanoes in the Aleutian Arc, erupting at least 35 times since 1848. The easternmost of the Aleutian Islands is Unimak Island. It's home to caribou, brown bears, and Mount Shishaldan, one of the most active volcanoes in the world. At 9,373 feet, the glacier-clad Shishaldan stratovolcano is the highest peak in the Aleutian Islands. And its highly symmetrical cone displays nearly circular contour lines above 6,500 feet. Shishaldan has erupted at least 36 times since 1824. The Japanese islands are a relatively young island arc built upon complex basement terrains. The islands are located where the Pacific and Philippine oceanic plates are subducting beneath the Okotsuk, Amur, and Okinawa plates. Over 100 active volcanoes are present in the region, including stratovolcanoes, lava domes, and calderas. Sakurajima is a stratovolcano located in southwestern Japan and is the most active volcano in the region. It's located just east of Kagoshima, a city of almost 600,000. The Japanese archipelago is comprised of over 6,800 islands, stretching over 3,000 kilometers along Eurasia's Pacific margin. This archipelago includes the four main islands, Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu. Stretching along the northwestern part of the Pacific Ocean's Ring of Fire. Here, subduction related tectonics have formed island arcs, and the Sea of Japan back arc basin. The southern end of the Kuriel arc and the northeastern Japan arc exist where the Pacific Oceanic Plate is subducting beneath the Okotsuk Plate at the Kuriel and Japan Oceanic Trenches, respectively, forming the northern island of Hokkaido and most of the largest island, Honshu. The mostly submarine Izu-Bonin-Mariana Arc results from the subduction of the Pacific Plate 
beneath the Philippine plate. The southwestern Japan arc includes part of Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu, and formed as a result of the subduction of the Philippine plate beneath the Amur plate. The southernmost Ryukyu arc consists of a number of smaller islands, including Okinawa, that stretch 1,400 kilometers along the Ryukyu Trench from Kyushu to Taiwan, and formed due to the subduction of the Philippine plate beneath the Okinawa microplate. The four main islands are generally rugged, highly forested, and are home to about 125 million people, whereas the Ryukyu Islands consist of high islands and coral reefs. And all of the convergent tectonism results in significant seismic and volcanic activity along the entire island chain. On Hokkaido, about a dozen high-magnitude earthquakes have occurred since 1993. And of its many volcanoes, about 20 of them are active, including the Mount Usu stratovolcano, which last erupted in 2001. Honshu is home to over 80% of Japan's population, mostly along its coastal areas and plains. Frequent high-magnitude seismic events and related tsunami also occur here, and have included the 7.9 magnitude Great Kanto earthquake in 1923, the 6.9 magnitude Great Hanshin or Kobe earthquake in 1995, and the 9.0 to 9.1 magnitude Tohoku earthquake in 2011. And of its active volcanoes, Mount Ontake and Mount Osama have had recent eruptions. And of course there's Mount Fuji, Japan's highest mountain. Fujiyama is composed of both older volcanics as much as 15,000 years old and younger volcanics that have erupted in the last 1,500 years or so. At 12,388 feet, Fujiyama is the highest mountain in Japan and the seventh highest island peak on Earth. The Nanpo Islands are an archipelago of small, primarily volcanic islands that lie atop the large submarine ridges of the Izu Bonin Arc. These islands extend about 1,200 kilometers from Honshu, south toward the Mariana Islands. Here's Nishinoshima, a small young volcanic island that is actively building out of the ocean from a much larger submarine volcano. Farther south is Ioto Island, aka Iwo Jima, of course the location of a fierce 1945 World War II battle but it's also the emergent tip of a much larger undersea stratovolcano. And most of the island lies within what is called a resurgent caldera, with rapid uplift, very high geothermal activity, and ongoing phreatic or steam blast eruptions. The southwestern island of Kyushu includes about a dozen active volcanic centers. These include the huge Aso caldera. With a circumference of about 120 kilometers, it's the largest active volcano in Japan. 
The central cone group of Aso consists of five peaks, often called the Five Mountains of Aso. It was the location of Japan's first documented historical eruption in 553 CE, with this eruption occurring in 2021. To the west, near Nagasaki, is the massive Unzindaki Stratovolcano Lava Dome Complex. With a history of lava dome formation and collapse, recent eruptive activity included a 1991 pyroclastic flow that killed 43 people. And in 1792, lava dome collapse triggered a catastrophic debris avalanche and tsunami that killed over 14,000 people and remains Japan's worst volcano-related disaster. And there's Sakurajima, or Cherry Blossom Island, one of Japan's most active volcanoes located only a few kilometers across the bay from Kagoshima, a city of about 600,000 people. To the southwest is the Ryukyu Island Arc, comprised of many islands of volcanic and coral reef origin. Like the active stratovolcano complex at Tsuwano-Sajima, And about halfway between Kyushu and Taiwan is Okinawa, which is composed largely of older metasedimentary rocks in the north and younger limestone in the south. With abundant coral reefs as well. In 1945, Okinawa was also the location of one of the largest and bloodiest Pacific battles of World War II. Oceania is a geographic region in the Pacific Ocean that includes Australia, New Zealand, and many smaller island groups. The largest area is Polynesia, which includes Hawaii, Samoa, Tahiti, Easter Island, etc. Micronesia stretches from southwest of Hawaii towards the Philippines and contains the Marshall Islands, Guam, and others. Melanesia is a third area that includes Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, Fiji, etc. The Hawaiian Islands are perhaps the most well-known of the Pacific Ocean Islands. They have successfully formed at the Hawaiian hotspot as the Pacific Oceanic Plate moves west-northwest over the Hawaiian mantle plume. The Hawaiian Islands are part of the larger hotspot trace that includes the Emperor Seamounts. The Hawaiian archipelago is made up of two island groups, the northwestern Hawaiian islands, which contain numerous small islands, atolls, and banks, and the main Hawaiian islands. The islands of the Hawaiian archipelago increase in age to the northwest, with the Curie Atoll being the oldest island, with rocks dated about 28 million years old. The main Hawaiian islands include the largest and youngest islands in the Hawaiian archipelago. They get progressively younger to the southeast and include Nihau, Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, Lanai, Kahulabe, Maui, and Hawaii. All of these islands are volcanic in origin and are less than 6 million years in age. Of the volcanoes on these islands, only the ones on Hawaii and Maui are still active. The big island of Hawaii is largely composed of five shield volcanoes, with Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea being the largest. 90% of the island is covered by basaltic lava, less than a thousand years old, and significant lava flow hazards are related to eruptions of Kilauea and along the East Rift Zone. The Marshall Islands are located in Micronesia, west-southwest of Hawaii, and are made up of 29 coral atolls, 
including Kwajalein, Inuitok, and Bikini. During World War II, intense fighting occurred on the Kwajalein and Inuitok atolls in 1944. From 1946 to 1958, the Marshall Islands served as the Pacific Proving Grounds nuclear test site, with 67 nuclear tests occurring on various atolls. The Marshall Islands is also home to the world's largest shark sanctuary, covering nearly 2 million square kilometers of ocean. The Marshall Islands are located in the Pacific Ocean, about halfway between Hawaii and Australia. These islands are part of the larger island group Micronesia. First settled over 3,000 years ago, about 58,000 people are now spread out across five islands and 29 coral atolls. The islands and atolls amount to about 70 square miles of land area, or about the size of Washington, D.C., or Gilbert, Arizona. During World War II, intense fighting occurred on the Kwajalein and Inuitok atolls in 1944. From 1946 to 1958, some of the islands served as the Pacific Proving Grounds for the United States, with 67 nuclear tests occurring on several atolls. The capital is located on Majuro Atoll. About 430 kilometers to the northwest is the Kwajalein Atoll, which is composed of 97 islands and islets that surround one of the largest lagoons in the world. The water temperature averages 81 degrees Fahrenheit, and underwater visibility is typically around 100 feet on the ocean side of the atoll. Kwajalein is now location of a ballistic missile defense site and a major global positioning system ground station. Farther to the northwest lies the Bikini Atoll, consisting of 23 islands that were the location for 23 nuclear tests between 1946 and 1958, and included the 15 megaton Castle Bravo thermonuclear shot in 1954, the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States. And yes, the bikini swimsuit design was named after the first nuclear test at the atoll in 1946. Easter Island is a remote island located in the southeastern Pacific. This volcanic island formed on the Easter hotspot, located on the westernmost part of the Nazca Oceanic Plate. The island is mainly formed from three shield volcanoes, Poiki, Ranukau, and the largest one, Terravaca. Pyroclastic cones and calderas are also present. These volcanics range in age from 780,000 to as young as less than 2,000 years old. Of course, Easter Island is mostly known for the roughly 1,000 monolithic statues, or moai, carved by the Rapa Nui between 1200 and 1500 AD. These were carved mostly from relatively soft volcanic tuff. Over 3,500 kilometers west of Chile, in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, Easter Island is one of the most remote inhabited islands in the world. Easter Island is located along the Easter Seamount chain, just to the east of the East Pacific Rise. The Seamount chain formed from the movement of the Nazca Plate over the Easter Mantle Plume. 
The island was likely first inhabited between 400 and 800 AD, possibly as late as 1200 AD, before being visited by Dutch explorers on Easter Sunday in 1722. Also known as Rapa Nui, the island is home to about 8,000 people and over 900 Moai, Easter Island's iconic statues. The island itself began forming about 780,000 years ago, with the eruption and overlapping of the three main shield volcanoes. This was followed by caldera formation and the eruption of tuff cones, cinder cones, and fissure-fed lava flows, some less than 2,000 years old. At the southwestern end of the island, Rano Kau is an eroded shield volcano with a flat-bottomed summit caldera. It includes a thick sequence of basaltic lavas erupted between 780,000 and 460,000 years ago, followed by caldera formation around 350,000 years ago. The caldera is about 1.5 kilometers wide and more than 200 meters deep, with the shallow vegetation-covered lake less than 10 meters deep or so. We move northeast over Hangaroa, home to about 3,000 islanders. Teravaca is a broad shill volcano at the northern point of the island. Basaltic lava flows form its broad, sloping flanks, which are dotted by numerous small cinder cones. Near the coastline is the Rano Raraku Tuff Cone. It is composed of weathered basaltic and lithic tuff and was quarried to create over 90% of the Moai. Hundreds of Moai still reside at Rano Raraku, with the massive Te Tokenga being the largest. The Poiki Shield Volcano forms the eastern end of the island. Here, the pre-existing summit caldera was filled with younger basaltic lava flows. The Galapagos Islands are an archipelago of about 20 volcanic islands in the East Central Pacific. These islands consist largely of shield volcanoes that formed in the last 4.2 million years on the Galapagos hotspot, located on the Nazca Oceanic Plate. Most of the islands began forming less than a million years ago, and of the 21 emergent volcanoes, 13 are considered active. Fernandina, is the largest, youngest, and most active of these volcanoes. It is a shield volcano with an inverted soup bowl shape. The Galapagos Islands support diverse fauna, including the marine iguana, the Galapagos giant tortoise, and of course the blue-footed booby, among others. Visited by the HMS Beagle in 1835, the biology and geology of the islands were described by a young Charles Darwin who later published his findings in the popular book, The Voyage of the Beagle. Not all islands are active volcanoes or located at intraplate hotspots. Take, for example, the Channel Islands, just offshore of Southern California. These eight compositionally diverse bedrock islands are composed mostly of Cretaceous to tertiary rocks and include numerous faults as the islands are located along a tectonically active continental margin. Indeed, the Mac OS 10.15 Catalina wallpaper is actually a view of the northwestern end of Santa Catalina Island. The Channel Islands 
are an eight-island archipelago off the coast of Southern California. The four northern islands, San Miguel, Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, and Anacapa, are part of the Transverse Ranges geologic province, which is comprised of generally east-west trending mountain ranges related to the active tectonism occurring along the San Andreas transform boundary. Westernmost of the Channel Islands, San Miguel Island is relatively flat and buffeted both by ocean waves and the prevailing winds. Here, Pleistocene marine terraces and terrace deposits are present on Cretaceous and tertiary marine sedimentary and volcanic rocks, partially covered by younger windblown dune and drift sand, sculpted by the prevailing winds. And the cold, nutrient-rich currents help support many types of pinnipeds, including the southernmost colony of the northern fur seal. Nearby Santa Rosa Island has moderate relief, especially in its southern half. The strike slip Santa Rosa Island Fault separates Eocene to Miocene sedimentary and volcanic rocks of the more hilly southern terrain from the more gently sloping area to the north, which includes Miocene marine sedimentary rocks and Pleistocene marine terraces and terrace deposits. Santa Cruz Island is dominated by two ridges separated by a west-trending fault valley and includes Devil's Peak, the highest point in the Channel Islands. The Santa Cruz Island Strike Slip Fault separates the island's two geologic terrains. Schist, plutonic rocks, and marine sedimentary rocks dominate south of the fault, whereas Miocene volcanic and sedimentary rocks, as well as Pleistocene marine terrace deposits are exposed to the north. The island is largely bounded by sea cliffs, with many sea caves located in its fractured and faulted rock on the northern side, including Painted Cave, one of the largest sea caves in the world. And Santa Cruz Island is home to over 60 endemic or unique plant and animal species. The narrow six-mile-long Anacapa Island includes three larger islets located just 12 miles off the Southern California coast. It's largely composed of gently dipping Miocene basaltic to andesitic volcanics, locally beveled by Pleistocene marine terraces. Anacapa Island is rimmed by sea cliffs and includes numerous sea stacks, sea caves, several notable sea arches, and of course, the Anacapa Island Lighthouse. It's interesting to note that at the height of the last Pleistocene glaciation, about 20,000 years ago, lower sea levels merged the four northern channel islands into one super island, referred to as Santa Rosa Island. The four southern islands, San Nicolas, Santa Barbara, San Clemente, and Santa Catalina, are part of the Peninsular Ranges geologic province. Remote San Nicolas Island is located roughly 100 kilometers from the mainland. This island is composed of Eocene marine sedimentary rock partially covered by Pleistocene marine terrace deposits and younger Aeolian dune sand. The endemic San Nicolas Island night lizard is not necessarily the most famous resident of the island, but perhaps the lone woman of San Nicolas Island who spent 18 years on the island until discovered in 1853. Her story was then translated into the fictional children's novel Island of the Blue Dolphins. With an area of about one square mile, Santa Barbara Island is the smallest of the eight channel islands. It is composed largely of Miocene volcanics, etched by several Pleistocene marine terraces and mantled with terrace deposits. The island is almost entirely lined by sea cliffs, including the 130-foot-high sea arch at Arch Point.
40 kilometers due east, Santa Catalina Island is a more complex arrangement of tertiary volcanic and intrusive rock with Cretaceous schist in the central and northwestern part of the island. The Catalina schist includes several types of metamorphic rocks, including serpentinite, amphibolite, and blue schist, and it's generally equivalent to rocks of the Franciscan complex. And finally, San Clemente Island is the southernmost of the Channel Islands, located about 100 kilometers west of San Diego. It's oriented along the northwest trending San Clemente Fault, and is largely composed of gently tilted andesitic to dacitic volcanic rocks of middle Miocene age. The tilted volcanic rocks are incised by numerous fault-controlled drainages and etched by several sets of marine terraces. The island is also home to several military research and training facilities. The Channel Islands provide some of the earliest paleontological evidence for humans in North America, and were thought to be settled by Paleo-Indian peoples at least 13,000 years ago. Later, the Chumash inhabited the Northern Islands, whereas the Southern Islands were occupied by the Tongva. Both were displaced by the Spanish during the 19th century. Santa Catalina Island is currently the only island with a significant permanent civilian population, mostly living in Avalon, having a population of about 4,000. The Maldives is an archipelago of more than 1,000 islands and coral atolls. These islands are built atop the Chagos Lakadivi Ridge, a former hotspot trace in the central Indian Ocean. The maximum elevation in the Maldives is only 2.4 meters above sea level, making it the lowest elevation country in the world. Maldives is a country situated along an 870 kilometer long chain of atolls and almost 1,200 coral islands in the northern Indian Ocean, slightly more than 400 kilometers southwest of the southern tip of India. The Maldives archipelago is located along the Chagos Lakadivi Ridge, a prominent north south submarine ridge over 2,500 kilometers in length that is considered to be the volcanic trace of the Reunion hotspot that originated about 66 million years ago with the Deccan Traps flood basalt event. The Maldives straddle the equator and are situated atop carbonate platforms built on the north trending submarine ridge. 80% of the Maldives is composed of live coral reefs and sandbars less than a meter above sea level. Reunion is an island in the western Indian Ocean near Madagascar. It formed in the last two million years or so on the Reunion hotspot, which is located on the oceanic portion of the African plate. The island includes two large shield volcanoes, three major calderas, and numerous spatter cones and pyroclastic cones. Piton de la Nieges is the larger one and is an inactive shield volcano. It is more highly eroded than its younger sibling shield volcano to the southeast, Piton de la Fourne, or the Peak of the Furnace, and one of the most active volcanoes on Earth. Some beaches in its proximity are greenish in color due to the abundance of olivine sand derived from some of its olivine-rich basaltic lavas. We move to the South Atlantic Ocean, where the Tristan da Cunha Islands are the most remote inhabited archipelago in the world. Formed on the Tristan hotspot, located on the oceanic portion of the African plate near the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The main island includes a large active stratovolcano with numerous satellite cinder cones. Also present are lava domes and mars, which are shallow lake-filled craters form when erupting magma interact with surface water. Tristan da Cunha is known for its wildlife, including 
subantarctic fur seals, penguins, and many types of birds. Tristan da Cunha, the four smaller neighboring islands, and the more distant Go Island are a group of volcanic islands in the South Atlantic Ocean and form the most remote inhabited archipelago in the world. The island is located just 400 kilometers east of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge on the African Plate. This hotspot, sometimes referred to as the Tristan Go hotspot, has a track that represents the classic evolution of a hotspot, with active volcanic islands at its younger end and flood basalt provinces at its older end. In this case, Tristan da Cunha and Go Island formed recently above the current hotspot, whose track extends back to the early Cretaceous Eden Deca Piranha continental flood basalts that erupted 132 million years ago in southwestern Africa and eastern South America, respectively. These flood basalt events occurred during initial rifting leading to the formation of the South Atlantic Ocean Basin. 400 kilometers to the southeast of Tristan da Cunha is its hotspot sibling, Go Island. Rugged and remote, it's one of the best shelters for nesting seabirds in the Atlantic Ocean. And here are the three island groups of the Tristan da Cunha archipelago. Located 32 kilometers south-southwest of Tristan da Cunha, the Nightingale Islands include the smaller Stoltenhof and Middle Islands with the much larger Nightingale Island. These islands are uninhabited but are home to a range of plant and animal life and are composed of eroded Pleistocene trachyte lava flows and pyroclastics and a likely 2004 submarine eruption indicates that active volcanism continues. About 40 kilometers southwest of Tristan da Cunha is Inaccessible Island. Rimmed by towering sea cliffs, only a few rocky beaches afford passage into the island. The eroded Pleistocene volcanics here have a similar composition to those of the Nightingale Islands. Inaccessible Island, along with Go Island, is an important wildlife reserve hosting northern rockhopper penguins and many other types of birds, including the endemic Inaccessible Island Rail, the world's smallest flightless bird. In contrast, land mammals, reptiles, amphibians, butterflies, etc. are absent from the island. The main island of the group is the much larger Tristan da Cunha, the island was discovered in 1506 by the Portuguese explorer Tristan da Cunha and first visited in 1643 by the East India Company ship Heemstede. Tristan da Cunha is roughly circular in shape and is centered on Queen Mary's Peak, located at the summit of the massive shield volcano that rises roughly 18,000 feet above its base on the seafloor. Volcanic activity may have originated 3 million years ago from eruptions on the seafloor at depths around 3,500 meters. These Pleistocene eruptions produced a sequence of gently sloping lavas capped by a steeper pyroclastic dominated cone. These units were intruded by dikes and mantled by younger cinder cones and lava flows. The island is ringed by massive sea cliffs that approach 2,000 feet in height. A large section of the northwestern cliff face actually collapsed between 34 and 26,000 years ago. And localized eruptions have produced a few relatively flat coastal lava platforms, like at Cave Point and Stony Hill Point. And in the north at Edinburgh of the Seven Seas and Potato Patches. The summit includes a 300 meter wide heart shaped crater lake and Holocene lava flows as young as 5,000 years old.
Red Hill is one of many cinder cones located on the base, the region between the sheer cliffs and the steeper central cone. Top, middle, and bottom ponds are lake-filled mars, formed as magma interacted with groundwater and produced steam blast or phreatomagmatic eruptions. Located at the edge of the base, Big Green Hill is a cinder cone that erupted 11,000 years ago. The island's most recent volcanic activity occurred in 1961, when the eruption of a lava dome and tracheandesite lava flows forced the evacuation of over 200 people from the island's only settlement, Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. The evacuees would return in 1963. And roughly 60 years later, Tristan's population is still under 300. In the North Atlantic, just 62 miles off the west coast of Africa, are the Canary Islands. This island archipelago consists of seven main volcanic islands. These were all formed on the Canary Hotspot, located on the oceanic portion of the African Plate. Mount Teta is a major stratovolcano and is located on Tenerife, the largest and most populous of the Canary Islands. Its summit has an elevation of 12,188 feet, making it the highest peak in the Atlantic Ocean Basin. It last erupted in 1909 and presents significant landslide and landslide-generated tsunami hazards. Farther north in the Atlantic Ocean is Iceland, located just to the southeast of Greenland. It's an island situated both on the Iceland hotspot and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The axial rift of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is well exposed in Thingvellir National Park in southwestern Iceland. The Silfra Crack is a portion of the ridge system that is submerged beneath Iceland's largest lake and its clear lake water make it a popular destination for scuba divers. There are many active volcanoes on the island, including Laki, a volcanic vent that erupts mainly fissure-fed basaltic lavas. Both Katla and Ayafil are related subglacial caldera or stratovolcano complexes that are more compositionally diverse. Katla is completely covered by an ice cap, and frequently produces damaging yokel hops, or glacier outburst floods. It is also a major contributor to global CO2 emissions, possibly up to 4%. Think about that for a second. Hecla is a stratovolcano that produces an enormous amount of tephra and lava. It has been dubbed the gateway to hell. And finally, Surtsey is a marine tuff cone that forms the southernmost point in Iceland. It first erupted above sea level in 1963 and is now over 500 feet above sea level at its highest point. The Lesser Antilles are composed of three groups of volcanic and limestone islands in the Caribbean Sea. The Leeward Antilles are located along the transform boundary between the Caribbean and South American plates. However, the Windward and Leeward Islands form where the North and South American plates are subducting beneath the Caribbean Oceanic Plate, and include an island arc made up of about 19 active volcanic centers that include numerous stratovolcanoes and lava domes. Since 1995, pyroclastic eruptions of the Soufriere Hills have rendered more than half of the island of Montserrat uninhabitable destroying the capital city and causing widespread evacuations. Indeed, two-thirds of the population has left the island. Lava dome collapse and the resulting pyroclastic flows during the 1902 eruption of Mont Pelee killed nearly 30,000 on Martinique. The Lesser Antilles are a group of islands in the Caribbean Sea. The Windward Islands Leeward Islands and Leeward Antilles compose the Lesser Antilles and are named according to their position relative to the trade winds 
that helped propel sailing ships westward toward the Americas. The Lesser Antilles are located along the tectonic boundary between the Caribbean Plate and the adjacent North and South American Plates. The east-west oriented Leeward Antilles lay just offshore of South America along the transform boundary between the Caribbean and South American plates. The Windward and Leeward Islands are formed along a more north-south trending volcanic arc, formed above the subduction zone where the oceanic portion of the North and South American plates are subducting beneath the Caribbean plate. Just north of Venezuela, the Leeward Antilles are made up of many small islands that include Aruba, Curaçao, La Tortuga, and others. These are largely tectonic islands. Volcanic activity is largely absent along this transform boundary. Farther east, the subduction-related Windward and Leeward Islands are home to almost two dozen active volcanoes across 11 islands. Volcanism is extinct on the southernmost island of Grenada, except for the dormant Mount St. Catherine stratovolcano on the northern end. However, just 8 kilometers north is the active submarine volcano Kickham Jenny, whose summit is at a depth of about 600 feet. To the north, the Grenadines include dozens of small limestone islands and keys. St. Vincent includes the active La Soufriere stratovolcano. This volcano, whose name translates to sulfur mine, has had several major eruptions since 1718, including the latest one in 2021. La Soufriere includes a summit caldera complex and various lava domes that have formed during multiple eruptions. St. Lucia includes a 5-kilometer-wide caldera last active 32,000 years ago. Also present within the caldera are older Dacitic lava domes, including the Gros and Petit Pitons. and Sulphur Springs is an active geothermal area near the center of the caldera. Next comes Martinique, having a number of extinct volcanoes and the infamous Mont Pelee. The stratovolcanoes and lava domes of the Mont Pelee Volcanic Center have produced more than 20 large eruptions in the last 5,000 years. In what was the deadliest volcanic eruption of the 20th century, the 1902 eruption of Mont Pelee produced a deadly pyroclastic flow, or Nuée Ardent. This ground-hugging cloud of incandescent pumice, suspended by searing turbulent gases, moved at hurricane speed and incinerated nearby Saint-Pierre, killing almost 30,000 people in minutes. The mountainous and rainforest-covered Dominica is home to nine mostly dormant volcanic centers. These include several stratovolcanoes and calderas, as well as a host of lava domes, like Morne Trois Piton, Morne Watt, and others. The southern area also includes Boiling Lake a flooded active fumarole roughly 200 feet deep that is the second largest boiling lake in the world. Guadeloupe marks the beginning of the Leeward Islands and includes six larger inhabited islands and many smaller ones. The eastern islands are dominantly composed of limestone and coral reefs whereas Basse-Terre is volcanic in origin and includes the active La Grande Soufrière.
tiny Montserrat is home to the Soufrier Hills Stratovolcano and Lava Dome Complex, which since 1995 has produced pyroclastic flows, volcanic mud flows known as lahars, and copious sulfur-rich gas emissions that have left the southern half of the island largely uninhabitable. The nearby islands differ in their fundamental geologic makeup. Antigua and Barbuda are low-elevation, limestone-dominated islands, rimmed by reefs, lagoons, and shoals. In contrast, the volcanic-dominated Nevis and St. Kitts each has stratovolcano lava dome complexes that are largely inactive, except for Mount La Amiga on St. Kitts. To the north are a number of small islands, including St. Barthélemy, St. Martin, and Anguilla. Like Barbuda and Antigua, these islands generally consist of older volcanic tuff and volcanic clastics, overlain by younger limestone, sandstone, coral reefs, and sandy beaches. And finally, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands form the western end of the Leeward Islands, just east of Puerto Rico. Cretaceous igneous rocks are widely exposed in the Virgin Islands, like here at Ramshead in Virgin Islands National Park, St. Thomas. And of course, the islands are popular tourist destinations, known for their sandy beaches, coral reefs, sailing, and more. And finally, the Bahamas include more than 700 low islands, coral reefs, banks, and keys. These are mostly formed in the relatively shallow waters of the Bahamas platform. The Bahama banks make up much of the archipelago and are composed of carbonate platforms where water depths are typically less than 25 meters. The banks were dry land during past glaciations when sea level was much lower, as much as 120 meters lower. That's about 390 feet. The Bahamas is an island archipelago country consisting of hundreds, if not thousands, of islands, islets, and keys in the western Atlantic Ocean, north of Cuba and east of Florida. The Bahama banks are the shallow water portions of several large carbonate platforms, where significant warm water shallow marine carbonate deposition takes place. The over four kilometers of limestone that comprises the banks has been accumulating since the Jurassic period, not long after the North Atlantic Ocean started to form and widen. All of the islands are low and flat, usually no more than 50 to 60 feet above sea level, and usually much less. Diverse depositional environments include coral reefs, sandy beaches, tidal flats, salt marshes, etc. The current ice age has included many long glacial intervals having much lower sea levels, where islands in the Bahamas were larger and even connected by areas that are currently submerged. These areas were exposed to long periods of subaerial weathering and erosion, during which solution weathering of the limestone produced karst topography that includes cenotes, blue holes, and related caves and caverns. Blue holes are circular steep-walled solution caverns that extend below sea level and commonly lead to extensive cave systems. Let's take a closer look at Long Island. The northeast side of the island that faces the open ocean is noted for its rocky shoreline and headlands. Indeed, Long Island is noted for its caves, and locally you can see the roughed karst topography submerged beneath the clear, shallow waters. A famous diving location is Dean's Blue Hole, the world's second deepest underwater sinkhole going down about 200 meters. Moving to the west, 
The terrain includes mangrove scrub forest and swamp, lagoons, tidal flats, with plenty of white sandy beaches and offshore shoals. At Sandy Key, shallow water currents have sculpted surreal forms in the carbonate sands. These types of fantastic erosional and depositional patterns are seen in numerous locations across the Bahamas. Well, that's all for now. Till next time. <laughs>